far as Jeff's deck is concerned, you see the records here, 11 and 2 for both of them. Jeff does have some cards that do matter here. Kasali Pride, Mitch can blow up a Splinter Twin. Mm -hmm. Spellskite, of course, getting against Twin decks. We all know that at this stage. Uh, Voice of Resurgence can play a role in things. Uh, we also find a card like Ors of Pontiff, which could matter. Uh, Quarter Callings, which you mentioned, there are four of those hanging out in Jeff's deck. And Jeff also does have an infinite combo of his own with Restoration Angel and Kiki Jiki. And last but certainly not least, four Path Exiles in Jeff's main deck. Yep. So he does have some interaction. I, I think on the whole, game one, I think things favor Brian. Uh, we'll see how things play out, and then we'll get to the sideboards, of course, when we do have some time. But for now, number seven and number three are battling here. And Brian going to search up an island with that Misty Rainforest. Play a Serum Visions, and we are underway here in round number 14 of 15 from Cincinnati. And both of these players have been towards the top of the standings all day. Yeah. So I'm sure they've, they've seen what each other's playing at the top tables. Yeah, not, you know, not much of a surprise. Again, Jeff's win percentage in Modern, uh, it really speaks for itself. It's very, very high. He's very comfortable in the format for Brian. Uh, he's been really doing well with Splinter Twin over the past handful of months. Second place at Grand Prix Oklahoma City with the deck. We've seen some other results as well from Brian with the strategy. He's really embraced this, and he's doing very well with it this weekend as we head back Jeff's way. That is a wooded foothills. This is a bird's paradise. We'll see what land Jeff wants to search up. He'll go with a stomping ground. Going to fall down to 17 as we head back over to BBD. It looked like Brian kept a land on top and sent a lightning bolt to the bottom of his deck with that Serum Visions on turn one. He's going to go lightning bolting on bird of paradise right now. Yep, it was bolt on the bottom of the deck. A basic mountain. See Brian actively not searching up dual lands. There is the one of Fulminator Mage in Jeff's deck. He's had the opportunity to get Steam Fence twice, electing not to. And, and he's also just preserving his life total. Also true. Here's a wall of moments. Let's see what land Jeff wants to search up with his windswept teeth before drawing a card. There's a Sacred Foundry. Two more damage here for Jeff. And we see Jeff not preserving his life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no fear in paying for these lands. Yep. I think the thought process here is if I'm going to lose, it's going to be by infinite damage. There are games he can lose that involve Lightning Bolt and Snapcaster Mage. So you need to be a little wary about that, I would think. But he's not afraid to pay life. And his deck does have a lot of different colors of mana as well. As here's a Deceiver Exarch. Going to tap down the Sacred Foundry. Full Mayor Mage was the draw there for Jeff. A horizon Canopy and a passing of the turn. Brian will draw. Picked up a copy of Snapcaster Mage. A couple of copies of Snapcaster Mage in the hand right now. And we'll see if he wants to start getting some value out of those mages. He has the Serum Visions, or he could just attack into the wall and flash back the Lightning Bolt. He's going to go with Snapcaster Mage. And he's just going to cast Serum Visions. A draw a card, picked up a copy of Pestermite. Lightning Bolt, Misty Rainforest. Those are the cards he's looking at here for the Scry. Now, he doesn't have the Splinter Twin, but he might keep the land because when he does get the Splinter Twin, he needs the double red sources to be able to cast it. Looks like both cards are going to stay on top here for Brian. Never a good feeling. See your opponent keep both scries. Yeah, it always makes you nervous. For Jeff, it's a ghost quarter. He'll just pass the turn back. You can see his hand right now. Kiki Jiki, Orzhov Pontiff, among other options. Misty Rainforest, the draw here for Braun Duin. Now, it's kind of tricky keeping that lightning bolt on top of his deck. Because if he decides he wants it, he leaves it there. He doesn't crack the fetch land. But if something changes where he feels like it's not good anymore, he can just get it off of his deck at any point. Wall of Omen's going to block Snapcaster Mage. One damage is going to come through here. Jeff's going to fall down to 13. It just gives him some nice flexibility, right? Yeah. And Lightning Bolt is a powerful enough card in this format against this deck that you want to leave access to it. Well, and it, it even makes the opponent nervous. Yeah. He kept both cards on top, even if he doesn't want the second card. Yeah, it's very true. A lot of little angles. Restoration Angel looking to blink out that wall of them. Let's see if Jeff another card. There's Electrolyze. 
That'll take care of Wall of Omens. And now Electrolyze actually drew Brian a card, which was the card he left on top. Yep. So it's possible he's looking at Jeff's life total here. His opponent's at 12. Keep a couple lightning bolts, chip away with his creatures a little bit, and just finish the game that way. We know he's got another Snapcaster Mage in his hand. Here's Corsair Crewfix. Jeff has to take one to cast it. We'll see what the top card is here. Path to Exile. Not with the Doctor ordered there for sure. Pass the turn by. And no land either. Mm -hmm. Brian will sacrifice Mr. Rainforest. Down at 17 he goes. We'll see what Landy wants to search up here. This time he'll go to the Steam Vents. And now we head back Brian's way. And you saw Jeff not want to attack with his Restoration Angel there. I, I think he's identified that his life total is low enough that he needs to start playing cautiously. Deceiver Exarch's going to come into the red zone. Love this attack. Oh, yeah. I like a double block even more. Exarch down. One damage up to the Corsair. Yep. We're going to see a Lightning Bolt finish this off. Yeah, Brian knows that his, his opponent is desperate for another land, mm -hmm. and he, he's going to keep him off of it. Now, we go back to Jeff. Path to Exile the draw. We all know that, given the Courser. But Jeff's man is coming back to hurt him a little bit here, as there's a Fulminator Mage. He's able to leave Path to Exile up here, which is pretty nice. Yep. But he has, does not have the ability to cast Corsair Crew Fix. He's having difficulty casting multiple big spells in one turn. And I don't even know if he can attack with this Restoration Angel here, because he has to have the fear of going to 9 and worrying about this Lightning Bolt nonsense. Yep. Scalding Tarn the draw here for Brian. That'll be land number 5. And you saw Brian with all of those cards in his hand using the remand. It's not so much that he's scared of that Fulminator Mage. He just wants to start digging through his deck a little more, try to leverage his advantage while his opponent is tight on lands. Razor Verge thick, it looks like the land. And now Jeff going to pivot into scavenging is. So both players experiencing some minor mana issues. A little bit, but we're still seeing a lot of back and forth. Yeah. Brian might have a response here because this does gum up the Snapcaster Mage area of his deck. Scavenging Ooze is out there. And Jeff is trying to make life pretty hard on Brian right now. Brian, however, will sacrifice the Scalding Tarn. Go get himself a Steam Vents. And it looks like he feels he's in the driver's seat. So he's paying the extra life. Going to get a Deceiver Exarch out there, or at least try to. Going to untap his own island. Now there's Snapcaster Mage. And now Ooze is going to resolve. It's good sequencing there. Ooze is probably just dead on arrival now. Oh, yeah. So there is Lightning Bolt being recast. Path to Exile. That'll go after the Deceiver Exarch here while Brian is tapped out. 
And now lightning bolt will resolve. And, and this whole exchange was kind of a win for Hoogland there. You think so? Um, he's not scared of being killed instantly. Um, the lightning bolt went after one of his creatures, not after him. Okay. And his opponent used a lot of cards. Okay, fair enough. Mr. Rainforest to draw here for Brian. That's a land. There's a Pester Might. Brian looking to get aggressive. Yep. Jeff going to fall down to seven. Jeff will draw a card. Razor Verge Thicket. And Jeff being pulled in a couple different directions. His mana not cooperating much this game. Well, he has the Kiki Jiki in his hand, but he cannot cast it right now. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an interesting question. Even if he had the mana to cast it, would he go for it? I'm not sure. I'm inclined to say no. But if he keeps waiting here, he's at seven. Yep. And clearly Brian, with the play that Brian made last turn, he's clearly looking to pressure Jeff. It feels like there's at least another Snapcaster Mage over there for the Lightning Bolt that's in the graveyard. Maybe there's just a Lightning Bolt in hand, what have you. But I would not be feeling great. Brian will sacrifice this Misty Rainforest. Fall down to 13. There's a Steam Vents. We're man right now in BBD's hand. And there's also a Snapcaster Mage, so those are the two cards that are left. Both pretty good ones. For now, though, Brian will just untap. He'll take a draw step. Picked up a Sulphur Falls. That'll be the land for the turn. Here are the attacks. Restoration Angel's going to jump in front of Pestermite. Brian will fall down to three. Excuse me, Jeff will fall to three. Yep. And Brian will probably stop him on the upkeep mm -hmm. and go for the win there. There's a Snapcaster Mage on the upkeep. The plan is Lightning Bolt, of course. And it looks like Jeff is going to try to cord in response. That's the only instant speed move he can make. But he knows he can't find a way out of this one. Brian Brondeau is going to win game number one here over Jeff Hoagland. Blue Red Twin up a game here over Kiki Cord. As we turn our attention to the sideboards here, and we will start with Jeff Hoagland, who has an engine explosives, three lightning helix, two slaughter games, three stony silence, a spell sky to reclamation sage, a fulminator mage, an island of rhetoric, an option of bailoff, and a Linvala keeper of silence. What options do you like here? Um, I would think a card like Linvala that serves multiple purposes would come in. It's, it's always going to be good as a threat, and it, it's insurance against the, key, the Splinter twin, twin combo. A lot of these other cards don't seem great to me. The Spell Skite will probably come in. I, I'm not a big fan of a lot of these others, though. Uh, for Brian's side, three Jace Architect of Thought, two Blood Moons, two Rose, two Vandal Blast, two Rending Volley, a Karen of Storms and a Gate, and a Static Caster, and an Anger of the Gods. Do you see any reason maybe to switch into the less Splinter Twin, more controlling route for this matchup? Um, if he feels like all those cards are just better, if every time he draws those cards, they're always going to have a purpose, but every time he draws a Splinter Twin, it might be good and it might be bad, he could just transition. Well, those are the options there for both players. Quick sure. update for you guys. Uh, Jerry Thompson did win his first game. He's playing against Andrew Tenjum right now in our backup match, so if we're able to jump that way, we will. Thompson, of course, playing Grixis Control. Tenjum playing Grixis Twin. Both of those players making a deep run. They're on the hunt for SCG points for the Players' Championship as well. And while these two players do shuffle up, we're going to talk about the YouTube page here for Star City Games, where you can watch replays of this open, along with all of our other opens, versus series videos, premium Magic Online archived videos, as well as unboxings and... Much more. Beautifully done. YouTube.com slash Star City Games. Become one of, one of over 70,000 subscribers at YouTube.com slash Star City Games. I appreciate that. You just tossed me a softball there. Well, you know, baby steps. Yeah. Baby steps. That's what it's all about here in the booth. As we turn our attention back to the match here between Brian Brundoon and Jeff Hoagland. For Jeff Hoagland, he'll be on the play here. A notable brewer. 
the player from Bloomington, Illinois, looking for another Open Series top eight on the resume. 24 years old, a young one, with one invitational top eight and 10 Open Series top eights. Staying at home with those kids? Yeah. I appreciate that. I can too. Gotta, those kids are going to be future Magic players. Oh, say. yeah. As they should be, Jeff. As they should be. Hopefully they'll be as good as his dad. As Jeff is making another deep run here in modern, Brian Braun doing. Also making a deep run, but Brian does it across a lot of different formats. His resume is a thing of beauty here with four invitational top eights, 13 open series top eights with that win finally in Las Vegas. Four Grand Prix top eights with two victories as well. Former valedictorian, learned to play magic a little bit later sure. in college. And he threw in the towel on college to play more magic, which appears to be a very good decision for him as his magic resume is filling up really, really quickly. And one of these guys... Whichever one of them win, we'll likely be able to draw next round. Yep. So it'll be another addition to their resume here of another Open Series top eight. So we'll see if it'll be Jeff or Brian. But it's been impressive to watch them both play here this weekend, both making deep runs in formats they are very, very comfortable with. And uh, we have what's shaping up to be a pretty nice top eight here this evening. Yeah, and, and, and I want to see what Brian did with his sideboarding here because he does have the option of going the controller's route. We saw it get the, the job done game one. Yeah, you know, the thing about Splinter Twin that I like about it, but it also makes it frustrating, is it just really, it can beat you a lot of different ways. Yes. You know, you can, you can play towards the combo, which people have to respect the entire time they play against you. You can play a Lightning Bolt Snapcaster Mage, which means you try to preserve your life total quite a bit. And as we saw in that particular game, Brian, you know, you couple Snapcaster Mage, play a yep. little controlling role, then pester might your guy on my turn to get through four points of damage, and then all of a sudden Jeff has to put the brakes on in a big way. Yes. It's a, it's a scary deck to play against because it has so much flexibility. And you could see how those early fetch lands that Jeff searched up ended up paying the price for him. Yeah, we saw with Brian's fetch lands, he was searching up basics. For Jeff's, he was searching up non-basic Ravnica shock lands. He dealt himself six points of damage in the early turn to the game. And then all of a sudden, lightning bolts, snapcaster mage hits, pester mage hits. They played a role in things. Yep. The tough part here for Jeff's deck, however, is that I think a lot of the time he has to aggressively search up his lands like that. Yes. Because he's... Yeah, he's so all over the place. Yeah, he's this wacky four-color deck, and the fetch lands are so important for his deck, but he's got to be able to play his spells on time, too. And it's likely that Brian brought in the Blood Moons. Okay. And we'll see if he can slam one of those and just really hamstring Jeff here. I want to see Jeff's basic count. He's got two forests of planes and a mountain, so... so but he, he has to be careful early. For sure. For sure. Four Birds of Paradise, a Wall of Roots... He definitely has some fixing available to him, but as you mentioned, he's got to be careful. Here's a Birds of Paradise off of, off of an Overgrown too. Ooh, there it is. Yeah. He said it was going to come in. I think he's got, uh, he at least has one Blood Moon in his hand. Not sure if he has two. I think we're going to see him actively search up a basic island here. All right, well, <laughs> just ignore anything I have to say. Yeah, thanks for that, Brian. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he could be trying to hook him. Sure. Searching up non-basics. I don't have Blood Moon in my deck. What are you talking about? The Serum Vision's resolving now. Scry 2. Karanos. Yep. Going to go to the bottom. So it's unlikely that he has much or any of the combo in his deck at this point. Basic Forest here for Jeff. Spell Skite. Bird of Paradise. Pass the turn back. All of a sudden, Blood Moon looks a little foolish. But Brian does have cards in his deck, looks like Electrolyze, that can take care of those birds. That would be a sweet one. Misty Rainforest, the land, pass the turn back over to Jeff. Jeff will draw a card. Looks like a Razor Verge thick in the passing of the turn. And Brian will draw. It's a copy of Serum Visions. Brian is also boarding a copy of Rending Volley, as that's a clean answer to Restoration Angel, that spell spite. Can it not redirect? Once again, Magic players, we are still taking There's an island. Today's 3 p.m. Legacy Challenge. If you have not yet signed up and are wanting to play with more Legacy today, come on up and talk to my friend Liz inside of the Registration area. She can get you taken care of. Once again, we are still taking And now there's a Serum Visions. 3 p.m. Legacy Challenge. That's... Was that a Splinter Twin? Did not see one. Here's Restoration Angel. Serum Visions will now resolve. Cryptic Command the draw. A couple different red cards in Brian's hand right now. I think one thing we're going to see in this game, he'll, it seems as though he can let the, the Blood Moon plan probably go. Sure. Doesn't seem great right now. Well, he's so far behind. 
that it would be difficult for it to, to hinder Jeff a lot. Here's three mana, there's Corsair. We'll see if this resolves. And Brian with that rending volley in hand. He'll use that right now to take your Restoration Angel. So down goes the 3-4 Flyer. And it's a good thing he has such an efficient spell to deal with his opponent's threat. Because he is falling behind quick. Yep. Wooded Foothills. That was the land he got to play, so he gained a life. I had a lot of rhetoric on top of the deck. A little bit surprised to see that in Just deck, so we'll see how that'll play out. Sulfur Falls is the draw. That'll be land four. And I, I think Brian's a little bit lucky here that despite Jeff's, you know, blazing fast start, he hasn't actually put anything sig significant on the table. Path to exile is the reveal here. Yeah, Corsair is a threat, but it's not the end of the world. There's Ilana Rhetoric. Cryptic Command looking to stop that. Does not want that to resolve. Now Jeff, his last card is Quarter Calling. And he could cord for three right now if he wanted to, but he's electing not to. The Rending Volley, the draw here. There's a Desolate Lighthouse. Now this is a Jace. Brian putting his shields down a little bit here. Jace will go up. Yeah, he was probably more willing to do that because he drew the Rending Volley. Mm -hmm. Path to Exile the draw there for Jeff. Their Architect the Thought was a standard All-Star. Very good in those Mono Blue Devotion decks along with Esper Control, starting to wake its way into modern in these Splinter Twin sideboards. I played a lot of this card. Yeah? Yeah. I have a card. With Sphinx's Revelation? Yep. Combo. Both good cards. Yes. I think Jeff might be thinking it's time to play this quarter calling. And it appears as though it will resolve. Maybe think an Eternal Witness, yeah. Get back quarter calling, a little value there. I would sing Can I Get a Witness if I could sing better. But I don't think it would be enjoyable for anyone. I think I'd enjoy it greatly, so by all means. Can I get a witness? Okay, no, that, no, no, I regret my decision. Yeah, well. Well, you warned me. Yeah, you warned me. I, I tried to um, avoid this situation. This is, this is my fault. This is my fault. Chase is going to go down to four. Thankfully, the singing has ceased as we head back Brian's way. Well, the effort I can appreciate. I gave it 100%. I, I know that. Dispel the draw. That's a fairly good draw here. Yeah. Brian's thumbing that Blood Moon a little bit. Does have Splinter Twin in hand. Now Brian is trying to figure out how he wants to move forward. I feel like Brian's in a relatively good spot right now. Jeff doesn't have a ton of pressure. Has an answer to the quarter calling. Has a rending volley for a restoration angel if it shows up. Sure, but he, he also has a lot of card advantage. He's got a lot of things on the board right now. The, the Blood Moon is very dead in Brian's hand. Mm -hmm. And he can manipulate the top of his deck with fetch lands to try to get extra cards through the courser. Here's Harvest Pyre. Spell Skype is going to get taken care of. Jeff had to redirect, so he's going to fall down to 18. And Jeff is going to draw Wall of Omens. Sacred Foundry on top of the deck. 
take his free card there with the courser. He'll take two, gain one. So he'll fall down to 17. Eternal Witness on top of the deck now. And now there is the Wall of Moments. Eternal Witness will be drawn. Top card of the deck, Planes. Brian working with perfect information on exactly what's on Jeff's top of Jeff's deck as well as what's in his hand. But Jeff, Jeff to me, is in a pretty good spot here. He does have the cord, which Brian needs to be careful for. Mm -hmm. He's got the witness to get back a card, maybe the cord. Okay. And then he has his insurance policy in the path to exile, so he can't just get instant killed at any point. Jace is down to three. Heading back Brian's way. Obviously, Brian could put together the right package of cards. Um, but I think if he ever tried to go for the win, he would need to be able to stop the cord and the path to exile, as well as casting the splinter twin. Which is a lot to ask for. Agreed. We'll see him go dig in here with Jace. Yeah, I feel like at this stage he's kind of giving up on the Jace now. Things have changed enough. Yes. Twisted Image, Roast, and a Sulphur Falls. Those are the three cards. Time to chop them up. We, we talked about this just a little bit last night at dinner. The, the mini baby factor fiction. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it was really something back in the day, casting factor fiction. This is one of my favorite moments of magic. I, I love the factor fiction dynamic. Here's this information face up. You split them, I'll decide what's important. And Brian gonna take Roast and Atlanta, Twisted Image gonna go to the bottom. Sulfur Falls. And Desolate Lighthouse will team up to cast Roast targeting the Courser. Here's Court of Calling. Dispel looking to take care of that. Dispel will work just fine. And I think Jeff is surging here just for the information. He's going to get another look at the top card of his deck. If he likes it, great. If he doesn't like it, he's got another fetch land that he can sacrifice. Firelit Thicket, he does not like. And also by doing it this way, he, doesn't, he also doesn't take any damage. Yep. Pay a life, gain a life. Stays neutral, gets some info. And he's found some basics here as insurance against a potential Blood Moon. Let's see what's on top now. Court of Calling. There you go. Everything's coming up, Jeff. Indeed. Roast unresolving as is Dispel. Brian will pass the turn back. Jeff will untap. Quarter calling, of course, the draw to go along with Path to Exile and Eternal Witness. And there's a witness. Jeff wants back spell, Skype. It's your turn to sing. Duh. <laughs> That's not a good idea. Here comes Eternal Witness Jace down. Can I get a witness? Yeah, there you go. yes. Couldn't stop myself. I know, I know. Sometimes you can't help yourself. Deceiver X Arc the draw. Yeah, Brian's so close, but he's so far away still. Yeah, now he's got nothing going. You know, Jace was doing a nice job of kind of clocking things, but as you mentioned, Jeff has done a nice job of just kind of building up small incremental advantages. Yeah, ne never really exposing himself. You know, he has the birds, a couple of basics, so the blood moon doesn't matter. He had the cord, he had the path, so getting comboed out wasn't an option. And now he has a board presence. Yep. And he's done a pretty nice job here. Brian's got some, some work to do. He's going to start by playing Steam Vents untapped. Now I'll pass the turn back. Jeff will draw. Wooded Foothills. He'd like to attack. 
Now and, he gets to attack. And we, we saw this from Jeff when he was playing last round, how, how patient he was with the quarter calling. And I really appreciate the, the patience. A lot of players probably feel like, I have this spell, I'm trying to win the game, I need to cast the spell. But Jeff feels like he's already in a winning position and he'll get the most value out of the spell when he has more information about what he needs to get. And it's certainly with how his deck is constructed, quarter calling is very valuable. Yes. Here's Path to Exile. Basic Island. Exarch untapping the steam vents there. Brown doing it to fall down to eight. And now Jeff will just pass the turn back. Probably see some filtering with the lighthouse here. Yeah, probably time to let that blood moon go. Brown will activate the lighthouse, it appears. Kind of draw and discard. Soccer Falls is what he found. It's a little interesting because if you discard the Blood Moon, you give away that you have, have Blood Moon. Yep. If you're going to lose this game anyway, you mm -hmm. might not want to give away that information. He's going to discard Splinter Twin. How high do you personally, as we're going to see Jeff cast, Court of Calling, how high do you value the information game? Stuff like that. Very high. Yeah. Especially in something like this. If your opponent doesn't think that you have Blood Moon, it can just be such a blowout. You know, it's not like revealing that you have a roast in your sideboard or something. It is a Windmill Sam potential game winner all by itself. Court is going to search up Kiki Jiki. Kiki Jiki is going to copy Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness is going to and get back the Court of Calling. And now this is something else that Brian is content with. And Spell Sky is protecting all of the important pieces. Yep. I think Jeff Dunn has done a pretty nice job this game. Getting himself into this position. Never moving too quickly. Building up small incremental advantages with Eternal Witness, Court of Calling, and Corsair of Crucifix to get to this point. Lighthouse activation. Misty Rainforest the draw. Rhino, discard that Misty. There's a Sulphur Falls. Pass the turn back. The Eternal Witness copy is gone now. So now we go over to Jeff, who will quickly draw. P and Kieran Nalar. Jeff will play a land. And this one might be over here. Yeah, I, I think Brian's just kind of going through the, the motions letting his opponent finish him off. He actually played another non-basic land, maybe just to try to sell the narrative that he doesn't have Blood Moon. And also, maybe he just gets a little more information about Jeff's deck. Yeah, I think that's the one thing that Brian might be doing here, is he's picking up a little bit on what's in Jeff's deck and how Jeff is playing. Because this is a very difficult situation to get out of. Yep. There's a cord. This deck is just built around quarter calling. It's really a, a beauty to watch when it's doing its thing. Mm -hmm. It's four mana from Brian. Perhaps it's cryptic command. It is. Jeff will sacrifice here. Basic forest. He'll court again. I think this is probably going to be for Restoration Angel. Yep. There is Restoration Angel. Restoration Angel can blink the Kiki Jiki. He can try to go ultimate here. And if that happens, of course, Jeff wins on the spot. And if not, that's not the end of the world. Yeah, I mean, Brian's really forced to have another rending volley here. Mm -hmm. I guess it also kind of asks the question, does he even want to play another rending volley? He will.
Restoration Angel. We're going to blink Kiki Jiki. Still a good thing to have untapped. Oh, yeah. Cryptic is going to resolve. Counter the cord. Brian will draw a card. Kiki Jiki going to copy Eternal Witness. Get back. Resto Besto. There's an attack for two. Brian will fall down to six. You can see how Jeff can continue. Just basically continuously put this loop together. Yep. Which is very hard for Brian to read. Electrolyze the draw. We've seen a lot of eternal witnessing here. Yeah. I'm curious. Brian probably going to ask a question of electro yeah, electrolyzing spell skite. Yep, exactly. Yeah. I'm curious. So in, in a spot like this, you take a look at the clock. 14.30 on the clock. I, I think the likelihood of Brian winning this game is very low. Very, very low. Do you do you play on or do you concede and just get ready for game three? If you're in Brian's spot right now. Um, if I'm Brian, I probably play on. Okay. If I'm me, I might just pack it up and go to the next game. Okay. Brian <laughs> Brian plays at such a high level. He, he's such an accomplished player that he will be able to find wins that other players won't. Yeah, he went for it with Electrolyze there. Was able to draw a card and kill an Eternal Witness. Activate the Lighthouse, and you can see the game. So not a lot of time lost there, about 30 seconds, yep. not the end of the world. Yep. We'll see if that comes back. Come, comes back to hurt him a little bit there, as Jeff Hoagland and Brian Brondoon are tied up now. Kiki Cord, Blue Red Twin, going to get ready here for game number three. Take a look at these sideboards one more time between the two players. For Jeff, Engine Explosives, a couple copies of Lightning Helix, the Slaughter Game, Stony Silence as well. We saw Spell Skite, Reclamation Sage, Fulminator Mage, Eyeliner Rhetoric, which is in the deck, Opsin of Bailout, and you felt Linvala was going to come in. Yep. Pretty big threat. Does that a rending volley, though? Do you think maybe you still leave it in even though it could die to that? I, I think it's a fine card. Uh, he can always search it up if he needs to. Um, just hard cast it if he needs to. It doesn't seem like a bad card. Okay. Uh, what we did see was Brian make some big changes to his deck. Yeah, he's got three Jaces, two Blood Moons, two Rose, two Vandal Blasts, two Rending Volleys. A Karanos, God of Storms, an Instatic Caster, an Anger of the Gods, and a Negate. We saw Karanos, who scribed that through the bottom. Yep. We saw at least one Jace, yep. at least one Blood Moon, uh, at least one Roast. Both the rending volleys. Both the volleys. Yep. So, you know, if you're taking a look at his deck list, we saw at least one Cryptic Command. We saw an Electrolyze. Uh, don't know if Endillion clicks in the deck anymore. I'd be surprised if it is. Harvest Pyre is probably gone. Unsure about Remand. Snapcaster Mage rarely leaves. We saw Twisted Image. I believe we saw him cast the Harvest Pyre that game. I think you might be right, actually. Yeah. Uh, spell Snare, Dispel, all this stuff. So, who knows how he's made room for all this stuff, as we do have an update on our backup match, where Andrew Tenjum has defeated Jerry Thompson. Two games to one. So for Jerry Thompson, a very disappointing day number two. He came in here 9-0 and undefeated, and he's lost to Ali Antrazi, Todd Stevens, and Andrew Tenjum today. So his top eight dreams are all over. Yeah, it's never easy. Yeah. The deeper you go, the tougher it gets. For Andrew Tenjum, his top eight dream is very much alive. He is now 11-3. and three. And if an X and three is going to make it, it looks like he will be one of them as well. He will have a win in the next round, it appears. For Brian... It's a Serum Visions to start. We're going to see players play a little bit quickly here, I believe. Yep. There's a Birds of Paradise. And we see Jeff search up a basic. Twisted Image is going to take care of that. And Brown will get the draw card. There's fewer things. There's few things, excuse me, that feel better than Twisted Imaging a Mana Creature. It is a good time. It is, it is brutal. Here's another Serum Visions. And for Jeff's deck, getting his mana creatures killed is, I think, pretty problematic. Yeah. Yeah, especially with how stretched his deck is. Misty Rainforest was the draw. He needs more mana, and he needs mana of the right color. He needs creatures, too. Yep. Court of Calling deck, after all. Jeff draws a copy of Kiki Jiki. Here is a Spell Skite. And he'll pass the turn back over to BBD, who will draw a card. Snapcaster Mage. Ooh. -hoo -hoo. Huh, snap a twist. A little, a little twisted image. Yep. It's getting unfair pretty quickly here. Sometimes the cards just line up the right way. Yeah, let's do the twist. And Brian has to be super happy with this start. I wouldn't be able to contain myself. There's Eidolon of Rhetoric. We'll slow the game down a little bit. 
So tell our viewers at home what Eidolon of the Rhetoric does. Eidolon of the Rhetoric is basically rule of law. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn, one for body attached. There are some positives and negatives to this. Uh, you know, rule of law was an enchantment, so they kind of died of the same thing. A negative is that it's a white creature that dies through rending volley. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> that's, that's one of the poorer things of it. Here's a Deceiver Exarch on the upkeep. And Brian going to tap down the stomping ground. Planes to draw there for Jeff. Here's a wall of omens. He'll draw a card. Planes pass the turn back. A lot of, a lot of big butts here for Jeff. <laughs> trying to clog up the board. Here come the beatdowns. Snapcaster Mage will be blocked by wall of omens. One damage will come through. Jeff will fall down to 12. Here's an Electrolyze looking to finish off the Wall of Omens. That'll work. Draw a card. And a lot of cantrips here out of <laughs> BBD. See, if all your rules spells draw cards, it's really hard to lose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two Twisted Images and not Electrolyze. Brian Zek is humming along right now. Jeff going to cash in a Horizon Canopy. Picked up a copy of Court of Calling. All I can do is pass the turn back over to Brian now. Here's an attack. Path to Exile is going to go after Deceiver Exarc. That'll work just fine. Brian will search up a land. It's funny, too, in an instance like this where Brian's kind of racing. Yeah. You know, it's probably better to kill the Snapcaster Mage, but if you kill Deceiver Exarc, you don't have to worry about the infinite combo. Yep. So this is, again, kind of the pickle that this kind of deck yeah, puts you. Yeah, a little bit of conundrum there. There's Firelit Thicket. Jeff going to slow down just a hair. Eight minutes and 30 seconds left to go between these two. And, and Brian's just really in the driver's seat here with his counter spells being online when he's ahead instead of behind. He, he got to use his removal spells literally as efficiently as possible. Yeah. He doesn't get any better. Yeah. Um, you know, plenty of lands to work with. Steam vents there for Brian. Here's a Deceiver XR. And now he gets to activate the Lighthouse. A average turn. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a Court of Calling for two. Jeff in the hunt for his spell sky so he doesn't die to the infinite combos. Brian's going to untap. He'll draw. Picked up another copy of Deceiver XR. And Brian has a lot, of, a lot of options here. He can tap that down on his turn. He can tap down on his opponent's turn. He can just attack and do it and finish off with Lightning Bolt. Or he can just attack and not Lightning Bolt. Yep. He'll tap it down and come across for three. Jeff's going to fall down to seven. Jeff picks up a copy of Pia and Kieran Alar. There is Pia and Kieran. And with Brian holding the cryptic command, depending on what he wants to do, he can counter the P and Kieran, bounce the spell skite, attack for four, and lightning bolt his opponent. He's chosen to draw a card instead. Is there anything Brian can't do right now? Lose, maybe? Yeah. I don't think he can lose. It seems difficult to do. Here's a Serum Visions. He'll draw a card, picked up a Snapcaster Mage, because why not? And that should just do it here. He's going to leave both cards on top of the scry. If it's, not, if it's not over this turn, it's probably over the next turn. Here are the attacks. Jeff's going to fall down to five. Lightning bolt. Pass the turn back. Ah, Kiji. <laughs> uh. Not as exciting here. 
This might be the white flag here from Jeff as he will extend yep. the hand. Brian Rondo is going to win this match here over Jeff Hoagland. Two games to one. Blue Red Twin going to take care of Kiki Corn for BBD. It's 12 and 2. It's the possibility to draw next round. It looks like another top eight here for number seven on our season one leaderboard.